Have you ever wondered how the California Academy of Sciences turns a dead animal into a skeleton ready for display? In order to prepare the skulls and skeletons of specimens, many processes are involved. First, the scientists find dead animals from calls to a hotline, beach sweeps, and expeditions. Once the scientists arrive, they decide if they will take just the skull, a tissue sample, or the whole skeleton, depending on what the collection is lacking. Ray Bandar, a field associate and longtime contributor to the Academy's collections, has collected skulls for over 60 years. When I find a, like a, a sea lion or a, a porpoise uh, or a dolphin on the beach, I, I take all the measurements, uh, identify the species, the sex, the age, probable causes of death. Before any more work can be done, the specimen must be transported back to the lab. But how exactly is this done? I got uh, a big old a shark, a 10-foot white, great white shark. So I'd have people help me carry it into my van, my VW van, and brought it back to the academy for ichthyology. Once it has been brought back to the lab, scientists clean off as much of the flesh as possible. Then the specimen go through one of two processes for cleaning off the rest of the rotting tissue. If it's a, a juvenile one that's very small uh, and young where the bones haven't fused together, I'll use uh, the beetles. If it's an adult, a harbor seal or a California sea lion or stellar or so on, I'll put it in buckets of water after I remove as much flesh, I scoop out the brains and a bacterial maceration. Large specimens go through a process called maceration. During this process, the bones of a specimen are placed into a giant tub of water. Bacteria slowly consume the flesh, leaving only bone. I do the maceration of all those sea lion, California sea lions on the wall. That's all maceration. Smaller specimens are cleaned off by the dermestid beetles. During this process, the bones are placed into a container full of colonies of these beetles. While there, beetle larvae feast on the flesh of the bones. When the specimen is ready to be taken out, the preparators make sure to remove the beetles with tweezers. I used the domestic beetles for, uh, I go back, to fish, amphibians, reptiles, uh, all the birds, and uh, for very small mammals. To prevent oils from leaking onto the Academy collections and exhibits, large skulls are put up onto the roof. The oils from the marine mammal skulls leach out from exposure to the sun. Once the bones are cleaned, they are given a six-digit catalog number and put into the collections or prepared to be put on display. If a skeleton that is in the collections is chosen to be put on display, it goes through a process called articulation, or the reassembling of the bones of a specimen into a skeleton. Remember, Although this all sounds really cool, touching dead marine mammals without the correct permits is illegal. In addition, touching any dead animal is unsanitary. If you find a dead animal on the beach, a seal, a sea lion, a dolphin, or a porpoise, there's no way you can legally uh, touch it really. You'd have to get uh, you have to have a federal permit from the National Marine Fisheries. If you ever find a dead animal, you can help scientists by reporting it. If you are in the San Francisco Bay Area, you can call the Academy hotline at 415-379-5381. The animal you report may even be prepared as a skeleton and put on display here at the California Academy of Sciences. So the next time you see specimens on display, think about all the work that was put into preparing them.